Take these two 16-valve Golf GTIs. One's an 87 E-Reg with 60,000 up, the other a few months old with just a handful of miles on the clock. Put them on the Bruntingthorpe test track, safely away from the public roads, bury the throttles and watch the difference. Some cars grow old disgracefully, but the GTI loosens up in its middle age and just gets better and better. For all its miles, the older car goes like a banshee, and at the end of the two-mile straight, there's a clear six-car lead for the silver machine. Often imitated, but rarely bettered, the Mark II Golf GTI still remains the longest-lasting and best-handling car in its class. At 60,000 miles, this 16-valve feels like it's just run in. For £4,000, what this one cost, here's a car which can chew the coattails of supercars five times the price. This is an early Mark II GTI, an 84B, and a car like this today would cost between two and two and a half thousand. And most of them look as straight and as original as this. Body stripes and alloy P wheels distinguish the earliest Mark IIs, along with what the Germans considered to be a cheerful interior. But amazingly, they still had left-hand drive wipers. By late 1987, the wipers were the right way round. The P wheels, alas, became an option, and side body mouldings appeared too. The interior, however, was a lot less garish. Leggy 87s start at 3,000, rising to four and a bit for a really proper car. Good value when you think an F-Reg Cavalier would relieve you of nearly six grand. And the Mini Wonder Wagon, the 16-valve, offers the best value of the lot, capable of 30 to the gallon and 125 miles an hour. 16-valve spotters will be keen to note the forged alloy wheels, slightly lower ride height, rakishly angled roof aerial, and these little catch-me-if-you-can 16-valve badges on its bottom. The interior's gloomy and the non-assisted steering heavy, but the multi-valve GTI has to be the performance car bargain of the year. This 30,000 miler would give you change from five grand, and you can forget the rumours of unreliability. Basically, the 16-valve does use oil when it's brand new and it will use oil if it's used you know high revs all the time I mean initially the rings don't seal until they they've done about 10,000 miles but we found a 16 valve that's probably done 80,000 we use no oil at all as for the grim subject of insurance we got it down to 470 pounds fully comp for a 30 year old living in Leicester and that's for the 16 valver 1990 16-valve cars come with BBS wheels, rounded bumpers and power steering as standard. If you can run to it, 7,000 buys a fine G-plater. Don't skimp on tyres though, Michelin MXVs just grip and grip and grip. Be on your guard for stolen recovered GTIs, there's quite a few of them floating about. Now while they're not the end of the world, and usually it's just a question of a missing radio, maybe missing seats and wheels, you can always tell a stolen recovered by the fact that it'll have more than one key because the ignition lock and the doors have been forced. This one is a rather radical example, it's been picked clean, but it'll probably go back on the road again because it's fundamentally a straight shell. It's far better than something like this, which is a damaged repair GTI and has just come out of the paint shop. When you're buying a second-hand GTI, think accident, and there are certain places on the car which can tell you if it's had any drama or not. Down here, where the wing meets the bulkhead, is a favourite. If it's had a frontal biff, you'll see creases where the wings hit the screen pillar. Check the door gaps too, you could drive a coach and four through this one. Opinions vary on body kits, but I reckon they're often there to hide a multitude of sins. Under the bonnet is where you'll find most of the clues. If we look under this one, the first thing that alerts my suspicions is that little yellow sticker down there belongs here, which means that the bonnet's been painted. Look a bit closer and we can see it's a very orangey peely finish and then in this little hole I can see signs of the original tornado red, which means that this, this bonnet's been put on and resprayed. Inspect the inner wings and the bulkheads for signs of distortion, flaking paint and recent repairs. These white stains are signs of rubbed down filler and tatty insulation like this means someone's been here before you. Now, I've nothing against damage repairables per se on two conditions. The first is that you know it's a car that's been repaired, so you pay damage repairable money. And secondly, that the job has been well done. In the case of GTIs, they need to be jigged, 
and if it hasn't been jigged properly, it will never, ever handle or corner right. Jigs are used to align a distorted body shell to a precision of millimetres. They walk away from anything that's been bodged. Of the half a million golfs sold in Britain, a hundred thousand have been GTIs. So there's a huge infrastructure of independent specialists who'll service the thing for around 85 quid a throw. If it's a 16 valver, run it on super unleaded with synthetic oil and change the cam belt every 60,000 miles. If, like me, you find your local Volkswagen Audi parts department can't help with sensibly priced trim parts, panels, bumpers, light clusters and wheels, and some of them really are mad money, I know a man who can. This place may not look much, but it's stacked to the rafters with second-hand GTI parts, all of them perfectly usable and less than half price. He's called Horace and his grills cost £45 against VW's 141. 50 quid buys you a tailgate, VW want 172. A seat will make you sit up at £700. Horace says it's yours for 25. Parts which you should buy from VAG are mechanical things like exhausts. Now this is a copy exhaust, but the original exhaust is fitted to the GTI is capable of lasting up to four years and 80,000 miles. So it's a false economy to fit anything else. Cheaper ones don't last as long, affect the performance, and make more noise. And if it's performance you're after, the GTI lends itself extremely well to specialist tuning. This 16 valve is bored out from 1.8 to 2 litres, developing an extremely healthy 179 brake horsepower. To you and me, that means a highly illegal 135 miles an hour. Judging by their image on the street, most people reckon they're plenty quick enough in standard tune. Oh, the street image of the uh, GTI, oh, it's just cool, way out. Uh, it's got nothing, you know, they've got um, 16 valves in no class with any other car on the road. Astro 16 valve, XR3, XR2s, RS turbos, you know, the, the image of the 16 valve is way out compared to them. The mileage on mine is uh, 35, 36,000. The engine is just loosening up now already. Right now, I don't want anything else. I'm quite happy with the 16 valve. Time was you had to pay serious money for a Golf GTI, but since grown inspiring insurance premiums have all but decimated the hot hatch market, they're all over the place. Here we are at a Midlands auction site, and we're falling over the things. There are five in here and eight outside. Today, this pretty E-Reg 87 50,000 mile 8 valve GTI has sold for a very cheap 2850. My guess is that they won't stay this cheap for long. So now's the time. Get out there and get amongst it. Well, it's just about time for me to leave Cornwall now and head back to the 1990s. But before I go, just a couple of things. First of all, we didn't really push the Porsche off the cliff. And secondly, well, that's about the Jaguar. Now, there's a lot of people who'd like to see it replaced with something lighter and more fuel efficient and more spacious inside. Well, presumably, these are also the sort of people who'd like to see Blenheim Palace pulled over and replaced with something in concrete and mirrored glass. They have preservation orders for buildings and monuments, and if ever a car was deserving of one, this is it. <laughs>